Hello students of science, in this video we're going to talk about the solution process, how you take something and dissolve it, and the factors that will affect it. So, some factors that will affect whether or not something's going to dissolve. Here's how you could increase it. You could increase the solute surface area, so let's say we have a, like a cube. Here, if you were to divide that into smaller cubes, where the surface area is going to increase increased and even smaller tubes where the surface area is way higher there. The ones are going to dissolve faster than the one with a smaller surface area. 6 cm 24 to 96, this one will dissolve fastest. The more finely divided of substances, the faster it's going to dissolve. Here, have an example. Three types of sodium chloride, table salt, kosher salt, and sea salt. As you can see, sea salt has the largest crystals. Table salt is almost finest, divided from right to left. We are going to see sea salt will dissolve slowest compared to kosher salt, which will dissolve slower compared to table salt. You could also take your solution and agitate. It mix, it stir, and shake it up. You are having more solvent come into contact with more solute. That's gonna increase the rate that it's going to be dissolving. You'd also heat up your solvent when you're doing this. Basically, you're going to get more solvent, solute collisions, and you're getting higher kinetic energy collisions. Between them, causing it to dissolve faster, all of those will cause it to go into solution a little bit quicker. Solubility is how, well, one substance will dissolve another for every combination at a different temperature. There is a limit, so you can have a solution in one of the three different states. You can have it to be saturated, unsaturated, or supersaturated. So non-saturated solute is still going to be disappearing. Dissolving into it, saturated, it reached its limit. It's then under rare circumstances, you can get supersaturated where the crystals are actually growing to out of the solution. So when you have saturated that's trying to contain the maximum amount of dissolved solute, the solution is that equilibrium. So we have an equal amount entering and leaving the solution at once. Here we have salt crystals where there sodium chloride ions are going to be entering and leaving the crystals. The solid state at the same rate. There so it's an equilibrium. And unsaturated, that's pretty easy. Anytime you have unsaturated, that's when it has less solute than a saturated solution. So up until the moment that it is saturated, we would still consider it to be unsaturated. Finally, supersaturated, that only exists under special conditions, and it is temporary until you disturb it. Here's some of examples of supersaturated solution. When you put something in there, some sort of nucleation salt, all of a sudden, all that stuff is going to crystallize out of the solution. It almost looks like the snowflakes is growing there, crystals is growing here. Another one where if you put a nucleation site in there, like with a pencil or something like that, the crystals are going to grow off of that. So next. Measuring solubility. As the amount of a solute that forms the solution at specific temperature, so here we mesh we have some different examples. What I want you to do is where down one example of something that is in solid and one example of solubility that is in a gas. One solid, one gas. Sugar is 204 grams per 100 grams of water at 20 degrees celsius or calcium hydroxide 0 0.189 grams 400 grams at 0 degree celsius so you notice that i'm including the temperature in there as well as the per 100 grams now you also notice that i have two things here that are gases gases are going to be a little bit different when you're writing it out you have to include the pressure and there are not a standard temperature and pressure because obviously the temperature it's 
is changing, we're told the, the red standard pressure or I atmosphere. So when you were walking about sol solubility, you need to make sure you were including the pressure. These two ones happen to be at standard pressure. I don't have one different solubility, two atmospheres or something like that. When you increase pressure, solubility changes. So here, some guidelines for solubility. Anytime we have liquids that are gonna be dissolving into each other, we would say that they are what is called miscible. So here, I have a yellow and a high liquid. They are mixing together. Here, we would say that these liquids are going to be miscible with one another anytime you have two liquids that do not dissolve that would be told obviously immiscible. A common example of this would be oil and water. One is hydrophobic and one is hydrophilic and don't like to make each other. If you want to sit long enough, you can sometimes get some different layers form. If you super creative and a lot of time, you can get some different soluble dyes and get a really, really cool rainbow mixture. They're of least dense, the highest density, but of course, they don't want to mix with each other. The general idea is like, dissolves like solvents and sites are more likely to dissolve if they share chemical properties to young that one polar like a polar compound and a polar solvent are more likely to dissolve. If you have a nonpolar compound, compound and a nonpolar solvent, they are likely to dissolve. Gas solubility. When you increase the pressure, you increase the solubility of a gas. So you have like a piston and then there's a liquid in there. When you push down on the piston, you are going to be increasing pressure and it's going to be pushing more of that stuff into your liquid. There, this is how they make you pressurized gas. When it comes like carbonated sodas, they have CO2 in the area. You put pressure on it and that's going to get more of that carbon dioxide to dissolve inside the water. However, if you increase the temperature that actually decreases the solubility, this is almost counter initiative, increasing temperature, less oxygen to naturally dissolve into it. This is the opposite of what we've seen with solids. Usually, increase in temperature will increase solubility, and this is opposite of pressure in increase in pressure obviously increases it. So, this is counter-initiative and worth thinking about when pressure goes up, solubility goes up for gas, but when temperature goes up, a gas solubility will actually go down at colder temperature. More gas can be held in solution, so gases actually decrease with temperature, whereas solids and liquids do increase in temperature when it comes to the solubility.